Yeah, thanks, Erica. Uh, yeah, first and foremost, uh, you know, congratulations to, to Oscar Pereja and, and Orlando uh, for, for winning the U.S. Open Cup uh, last evening. Uh, Oscar is a, a great person, first and foremost, an incredible coach, and uh, no one works harder. So uh, big congratulations to him and his, his staff and, and players um, for, for their win last night. Um, Transferring to, uh, to us in our last performance against Red Bull, I thought uh, a really, really important win, uh, a really important team performance. Um, we talked about clinching a playoff spot, um, but now the goal is to try to you know, get as many points and, and win the Eastern Conference uh, and finish in first place, which we know will not be easy. Uh, obviously, four games left, but uh, the win at Red Bull um, you know, goes a long way. Uh, and showing just how strong this team is. Uh, I think we utilized a lot of our depth. Uh, guys stepped up when they were called upon and put in a really good performance in a hard place to go play. Uh, obviously, to keep a clean sheet was, was very important. I think Andre Blake's leadership at the back uh, has been excellent. You know, Daniel Gazdag, another guy that's uh, in the MVP running now uh, and continues to score big goals for us. So uh, it's a group that's very confident. Um, but we're also very respectful of the opponent. Uh, obviously, Orlando comes in here uh, on a real high, uh, obviously, you know, and confident coming off of a big win in, in the final. Uh, so we expect a really difficult game. Obviously, they're only on two days rest, so that maybe is a little advantage that we have. But um, they have depth and quality in their group as well. Um, we recognize now we're playing really well at home. Uh, we want to try to stay undefeated there. Uh, we need our crowd to be as, as lively and as crazy as it's been uh, through the entire summer uh, because we want to finish unbeaten at, at home this year. So that's our goal. Um, we know it'll be a tough game, really good opponent, and uh, we'll have to be really sharp to get all three points. Jonathan? Thanks, Erica. Jimmy talked a fair amount in the last few weeks about aspiring to win the Shield. Even as you know what, you know, what it will take to do so, that you're, you're, you're still playing from behind by some, by some significant measures. And I wonder what, what the conversation is in the locker room about wanting to win it, obviously, but understanding what it truly really takes. Yeah, I think, you know, the Shield is, is obviously a goal of ours, for sure. Um, I think, you know, goal number one, though, and they both go hand in hand, is, is winning this Eastern Conference, and, and meaning that, um, you know, at least the East will have to go through Subaru Park. We know how important that is. We don't want to slip up. We don't want to have any um, letdowns, and that's what we're guarding against. Um, but certainly, you know, everybody has an eye on the schedule. Um, you know, LAFC has some tough games left. Uh, we have some tough games left. Um, and all we can control is, is, is the games in front of us. So uh, we want to try to win all four if we're able to do that. We do recognize that doesn't, even if we win all four, it doesn't guarantee us uh, – anything, um, but we do want to put as much pressure on L.A. as, as possible. Um, they've had an incredible season as well, um, you know, Montreal, Austin also. So um, there's a lot of really good teams, um, and you just don't want to take your foot off the gas when you're playing well uh, because, again, the momentum in this league can be lost uh, as quickly as it comes. Yeah, well, look, anytime you play in a final, um, you know, and, and it's midweek, uh, as it often is um, in the Open Cup, you know, you, you're going to have a situation where you're going to get a team that's either really happy or, or really upset, for sure. So the emotional side, I think those are the two extremes that you're going to have. Um, they also have uh, a little bit of fatigue in their legs, right? Um, and if you look ahead, Orlando has... Uh, I believe a midweek game, big midweek game against Atlanta, and then another game right away against Toronto, uh, both at home. So how they how they decide to approach it, um, that's not for me to, to decide or speak about. So um, we just have to look at all the possibilities, and and we do know, you know, at, at most positions they're they're two players at least deep um, and and have a lot of quality. So um, you know we'll prepare for their best group, uh, the group that will be prepared for the group that played last night for them. Um, but we could expect also some changes, whether that's two or three changes, whether that's seven or eight changes, we don't know, you know, so we're, we're just talking to our players about, you know, at home being ourselves. Um, and I, I told them, regardless of who Orlando puts on the field, 
um, they're going to be going for all the points and, and they're going to be trying to impress their coach. Uh, they're going to be trying to uh, get more minutes down the stretch, whatever it might be. So these are professionals. They're a good team and, and you know, they're fighting for a home game as well right now. So there's real motivation on these points. Um, how they approach it will be up to them. Um, but certainly we do get a little break in that they've had just a busier schedule recently. Um, you know, even after the game against Miami got moved from the, the weekend. So, yeah, well, it'll be uh, a really hard game. We know that. Um, but you're right. It's, it's tough to pick exactly who Oscar's going to choose, but they have some depth for sure. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd lean towards, uh, I, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, I was rooting for 120 minutes, and, and <laughs> that's for sure. Um, but, you know, look, I, I think that it's hard to predict other teams' DNA and other teams' makeup, but you would think, you know, in most instances, uh, coming off of a loss is, is much harder. When you win games in this league, you don't feel fatigue. You know, you don't feel tired. You want to go again. You want to get out there. Um, when you lose a, a big game, there's a natural, you know, you know, uh, deflation of your group that, that happens. So, um, yeah, if I had to choose, I, obviously, you know, you probably want to play teams off of, of, a, of a loss. You know, some teams get motivated after losses, though, too. So it's a tricky one. Hey, Jim, how you doing? How you doing? Um, you guys have map checks out you can clinch a top two C in the east this week does that little extra motivation of, of what you guys can clinch throughout these next four games help you just a little bit more of a motivating squad knowing okay you've got the playoff spot but home games are still need to be clinched then one seed and just little things incrementally throughout these four games yeah, look, I, I've gone to the well uh, quite a bit with our players in, in guarding against the letdown and saying, you know, this is going to be the toughest game. You know, I've, I've used that one quite a bit in recent weeks, and the players have responded every time. So I think they're, they have motivation. Um, they see that number one seed, that Champions League berth uh, as our, our next goal and next box to check. Um, so I think it's built in. Um, doesn't mean it's going to be easy. We know how hard it is in this league uh, or anybody can beat anyone. Uh, I talked about it against Atlanta, how dangerous that game was. I talked about it against Red Bull, uh, a really motivated Red Bull group to beat us. Um, so, you know, look, they know the pressure that's there. They know the importance of home field advantage. I think they love playing in Subaru Park, so that's a, that should be enough incentive for them to play in front of your fans. Uh, and who knows, if if we're able to have LAFC slip up, you know, for it to, the, the final to come through Subaru Park would be incredible. So um, still a lot of work to do, a ton to, uh, to do down the stretch here in these four games. Um, you know, and it'll, it'll be unique in that we play, uh, you know, we play Orlando here, we go to Atlanta, and then there's that, you know, awkward kind of international window that's going to, you know, deflate everybody a little bit, and you have time to to rest and recover and think about all the scenarios. So, yeah, to, uh, I'll put it bluntly: to to clinch that number one seed before that break would be incredible. So, you know, that's probably going to take two wins out of us over these next two games, and we recognize that. Jordan Stress. Hey, Jim, I want to ask you about uh, about Julian and the sort of incredible season that he's had. Yeah. Looking back to the you know to the previous off season when you know, you were presented with the, the option of bringing him in by Ernst. I'm assuming that's how it went. You know, what was your initial reaction to the opportunity? And, you know, did you foresee at that point being able to get this much production out of that player? Yeah, look, we wanted to, we almost pulled the option right away, you know, because we, we loved what we saw in the preseason. Um, you know, we almost, I remember executing and having discussions with Ernst uh, about it um, you know, the first time around against uh, Miami. Uh, so look, you know, Julian's been excellent for us. I think the goal that he sets up, the second goal uh, against Red Bull in a game where he comes off the bench is, is a, a perfect example of the player he is, a perfect example of maybe his growth in this group um, because it involves uh, a defensive action and then an offensive action in, in both of them in less than two seconds. So he, he wins the ball, uh, he goes to Mikel, it's laid back to him, and he plays a through ball uh, to Daniel one touch uh, and, and does two incredible actions in a matter of 
two or three seconds and it winds up in the back of the net for a big you know, second goal to kill off the game. So um, everybody talks about the goals, the goal in LAFC, incredible, you know, the goal uh, you know, in DC, the curler to the back post. We can talk about all the goals that he scored and that's amazing. Um, but where he's really grown and taken a step forward is um, his, his ability to work hard defensively, uh, the assists that he brings, you know, bringing others into the game, and the fight that he has on the field. I think it really fits our city and it fits our, our system and style of play. So really happy. Um, you know, we weren't going to let Julian get away uh, once we had him in here you know, from the preseason. And um, an example of a player that still has uh, a lot of great years in front of him uh, and, and a big future in front of him because he's still so young. And to score the amount of goals he has this year uh, you know, tells everything. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, you know, as always, when a new player comes in, we tell we tell him, you know, it's it's not on him to impress us. You know, he's here for a reason. Uh, it's up to his teammates, the coaching staff, to make him feel comfortable. So just do the things that uh, he's used to. Uh, obviously, he's had a little bit of a layoff, and um, you know, isn't maybe up as you know fit yet as the, as all the other players that are in midseason. That's natural. Um, but we played a good 20 minutes, 11 v 11 in space yesterday, and he did, uh, did a really good job. Uh, he'll probably get uh, his first minutes with Union 2, um, so you guys will get to see him as well. Uh, but a really good range of passing. Uh, he's a physical uh, specimen. You know, he's probably, I'm pretty much eye to eye with him, so he's probably a good, maybe a little shorter than me, maybe 6'3". Um, but strong, you know, physical, good ball winner, and uh, can really pass the ball. So whether it's at the 6, the outside of the diamond, uh, he can play uh, multiple spots for us in midfield and is a, uh, a good young kid, too. And I think he's fit in really well with the locker room. So I think there's uh, a lot of potential there. It's still early, and he's going to work hard, but uh, happy with the first impressions for sure. Yeah, Ali's was never no injury there. It was just kind of fatigue, and you know he had a family issue where he kept him up at night, so his sleep was all out of whack uh, last week. Um, I give him a ton of credit for coming into the game and and helping us uh, preserve the win. Uh, you can see his quality, and he's playing at his highest level uh, this season. Uh, Jose, you know, was obviously the game day decision with the ribs, as we talked about, but uh, he's trained fully this week. So um, we are, knock on wood, fully healthy, uh, fully fit and ready to go. I think we trained with 23 field players today, which was uh, uh, nice. And, and, and uh, you know, everybody's, you know, pushing for minutes. Everybody's pushing to be in the 20 man roster and obviously the starting lineup. So uh, it's an exciting time of the year. I think we're playing good soccer. Uh, but we're always guarding against any any letdown and you know any complacency. So uh, competition helps in that regard, and I think we have a good deep team. Uh, 